I'd like to call to order this meeting of the first five Sacramento Commission for Monday, April 3rd, 2017. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll and establish a oh, quorum? Dave Gordon. Beth Hassett. Here. Terrence Jones. Here. Olivia Kassiri. Paul Lake. Here. Scott Moat. Here. Donna Snaringer. Here. Steve Wirtz. Here. Lee Turner Johnson. Here. Kathy Kosick. Here. Terry Porter. Here. Christina Elliott. Here. Patrick Kennedy. Phil Cerna. Here. We have a quorum. And today, since Commissioner Gordon is out, Commissioner Sterringer will be voting as the alternate. And with uh, Olivia Kassiri out, uh, Kathy Kosick will be voting as alternate. The meeting of the first five Sacramento Commission is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T UVerse cable systems. This meeting is closed caption and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will be repeated Friday, April 7th at 6 p.m. on Channel 14. Members of the audience wishing to address the board may sign a request to speak form located at the kiosk in the back of the room. Please give the completed form to the staff member seated behind me. Please speak into the microphone when addressing the board and state your name for the record. If you have any electronic devices, please put them on silent or turn off now. Thank you. Great, thank you. Commissioner Elliott, will you do us the honor of leading us in the pledge, please? allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, again, I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, this afternoon's first five Sacramento Commission meeting, especially the uh, some of the younger people <laughs> that are here. It's always good to see uh, uh, babies in the audience um, and their uh, their families. Uh, again, you are uh, certainly welcome to address this commission on any item that's on our printed agenda. Uh, you are also welcome to address uh, the commission on any item that is not on the agenda. Uh, all we ask is that you do complete a speaker slip and you uh, complete it and give it to our um, uh, our clerk. And we'll call you in the order that uh, I receive it. And uh, we ask that you keep your comments to three, minute, that, three minutes. That way uh, everyone has an opportunity to address the commission if they so choose. So with that, our first item, please. Approve the March 6, 2017 draft action summary. Okay, any commissioner wish to make comments, suggest changes, if not, uh, entertain a motion? Move approval. Been moved by Commissioner Lay. Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. Public comment on non agenda items. Okay, as was just noted, uh, anyone wish to address this commission on any item that is not on today's agenda? I don't see anyone approaching the podium, nor do I have any speaker slips. So with that, we'll move on to item three. Executive Director's Report. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. I have a brief report for you and then a couple of things that have filtered in in the past week and a half since I actually sent you the report, so I'll, I'll um, augment a little as we go. I um, wanted to start with uh, immigration resources for families. Um, at our last meeting, um, Commissioners Wirtz and Cerna brought up the issue of children being separated from their undocumented parents and the trauma that that causes. Um, they asked staff to share resources with our community partners and to get involved in appropriate ways. First Five staff uh, recently, just last week, joined Supervisor Kennedy's team of key county staff who are working on this issue. So we had our, our first meeting last week, and uh, Supervisor Kennedy is, is gonna conduct quarterly meetings on this topic. Um, the goal is to educate ourselves as a county and then to pass on that information to the clients um, of the county on immigration status and rights, safe havens at schools, and resources available to parents. Um, so we will be sharing that um, through the commission to all of our funded partners and also on our social media. So more coming on that, but steps are being taken to address this issue. Um, the association actually is also has a lot of resources available and those who have been um, 
sent out to our community partners in English, Spanish, and I think even a couple other languages. So we're getting the word out on that. Um, I have just a brief blurb on Help Me Grow. It's, it's starting to get real and exciting now. Um, throughout the, the state, uh, there are 14 Help Me Grow counties that are in existence right now. And Help Me Grow is sort of, a, it's like a large system, a best practice system for screening and early intervention services. So you may know that we fund a program called Project SOARS um, that's doing some screening and then connection to early intervention services. Help Me Grow is just sort of a best practice model that we're, we're working on morphing Project SOARS into a Help Me Grow model. And the First Five Association just uh, hired a full-time staff person to provide technical assistance to all the first five counties who are working toward that. So we have a small leadership team put together um, with some key folks throughout the county and community partners. And um, we are now just in the application process, but we hope within the next year or so to be full, fully Help Me Grow um, oriented county. Um, for our other updates, you'll have to excuse the uh, date on your in the ED report in your packet, which said that we're going to the Board of Supervisors on April 11th. Correction to that, we're actually going on April 25th. Um, we'll be providing our strategic plan draft to the supervisors for their review and comment. Any suggestions or um, will be brought back to the commission for consideration in June. Um, so we sort of we pushed it back just a little ways, um, but still all percolating and coming together nicely. As far as putting kids first, our first five advocacy update, um, we continue to build on the momentum of our town hall convening in January. Um, we've been through the uh, policy advocacy and sustainability committee. We've been looking at bills and supporting different legislation. That's really exciting. Um, there's a couple that I've highlighted in the report. Um, and Aaron would want me to note that the future of First Five Sacramento video has been the most popular thing on our um, social media and website. And it's been getting a lot of click throughs and people watching. <clears throat> And a brief staffing update is that Leanne Hopkins, who was one of our three ASOs, um, has retired after 41 years at the county, <laughs> and um, 11 with us at first five. So that does leave us shy, one staff person, but we're just gonna kind of hold that for thought for a minute and figure out how what we wanna do as far as restructuring, and we know we need to potentially cut positions with the new strategic plan, so we may just be, um, not refilling that, we're just looking at how to best handle our own internal operating reductions. So that is going on, but we've reassigned and it seems to be going okay so far. I'll keep you all posted. Um, you can see Aaron's marketing and media update. Um, we have our usual partnerships going and um, I know that she would also want me to point out uh, the little dry erase handout that you received in your packets earlier. Um, this is a, our freebie, but uh, the intent of the freebie is to really draw the attention to, to making everyday things sort of quality moments between children and parents. Um, and then just a couple of brief announcements. Um, it is Public Health Week, which I'm sure Commissioner Cassirier was going to tell you this anyway, but um, First Five's partnering with the Public Health Department to celebrate Public Health Week this week. Um, to kick off that week-long celebration, there was a wellness festival at Fairytale Town about a week ago. Um, we were targeting parents of very young children and encouraging well-child checkups and immunizations. And there's a flyer um, at, your set, at your seat with the remaining information for the rest of the events this week. Um, there's also a glory conference. Um, our partners at Sierra Health Foundation are sponsoring the conference on April 20th. And the commission has been asked to assist in pulling together a, a panel to talk about um, health and well-being for black children in Sacramento. And so um, Linda from our staff is working with Kendra to um, get the right people at the table to make that a robust conversation. And there's also a flyer at your seat for that. And I believe there's still some openings if anybody has availability in their calendar and would like to attend. 
the last thing I have is just a uh, FYI, really, each year Children Now publishes a scorecard for the state of California and for each of the individual counties on children's well-being. And the data for Sacramento County and all the counties is was just released. So I'll be sending you the link um, so that you can click through that and see how we compare to the state um, on a variety of different um, indicators um, in the areas of education, health, and child welfare. And just as a spoiler alert, I wanted to give you a couple that I thought were interesting for us. Um, we've increased uh, since 2014. We've gone up 15 percent points, percentage points in children who are read to every day by their parents. So uh, we're now up to 79 percent, which is actually one of the highest in the state. So we're doing really well in that. We slightly decreased um, down to only 43% of three and four year olds who are enrolled in a preschool program. So obviously we still have an access to early education is still an issue. Um, we continued to increase the number of newborns exclusively breast breastfed at the hospital. We're up to 72%, which is higher than the state average. And 96% of children in Sacramento um, have access to health insurance. That number continues to grow too. So for most, for the most part, we were actually doing pretty well in the zero to five age range, and then some things dropped off in the older adolescent areas, but decent for zero to five. And that concludes my report. Great, thank you. Uh, any questions for our executive director? Okay, great, thanks. thanks. Next item, please. Approve funding recommendations for community building grants. And Commissioner Kasiri has arrived, so she'll be voting on this item instead of Commissioner Kasi. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Alejandra Labrado, who is our planner in charge of this, and she will give you the report. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Today, I'd like to walk you through this commission letter regarding a approval of the recommendations to um, uh, the, the recommendation for funding for the round three community grants. In addition, we also have two current group leaders from rounds one and two who would like to share some successes from their group. And um, so we're happy to present you with 10 community grants for this round that are being recommended for funding. Uh, 12 proposals were received and 11 received a passing score. One decided to withdraw their application and hopefully reapply later, so we are moving forward with 10 grants that we are um, presenting you with today. Uh, you all have a chart in front of you um, that so you can follow along. As you can see, the community building grant groups are represented in the audience, so I will be introducing them and asking them to stand. Um, do you have any questions before I move into that? Any questions for staff? No. Okay. The first group I'd like to introduce is Baby Art Your Heart Out, or ba BAO. And this group is encouraging inclusion, growth, and communication through art play for children on the autism spectrum. This will help the children with social skills, confidence, self-esteem, and sensory regulation for the kids zero to five years of age and their siblings. Thanks for being here. Great. The next group is the Del Paso Heights Tots, and their sponsoring agency is the Friends of North Sacramento. This group includes parents, educators, and local community activists in the Del Paso Heights and North Sacramento communities. They desire to increase literacy, especially among immigrant families. The next group is Elements to Play. The sponsoring agency is the Sacramento City Unified School District Infant and Toddler Play Group. This group will offer weekend play group activities for families in the Marina Vista area and surrounding communities. This group will meet bi-weekly for play, arts, and crafts. The next group is Empowered Parents. The sponsoring agency is the Community Housing Opportunities Corporation. This, these families will gather monthly in the Acacia Meadows housing complex on Stockton Boulevard. The parents will participate in resource sharing with various community presenters and first five funded partners, followed by interactive activities with their children, such as reading and positive play. The next group is not present today. They are families of the forest. 
and these parents will gather monthly with their young children to expose them to spending time in the natural world around them. Activities will include building a small shelter, nature walks, play, exploring plants and insects. The next group is Los Héroes. The sponsoring agency is the Walnut Grove First Five Family Resource Center. This group of bilingual dads will encourage other dads to participate in activities with their young children. Activities include gardening, family soccer games, barbecues, visiting the Crocker Art Museum, and infant and child CPR skills training. The next group, represented here in the bright yellow, is the Men in Child Care Adventure Pop-Up Playgroups. Their sponsoring agency is the Sacramento Valley Association of Education for Young Children. These fathers and other male role models will foster children's creativity through building temporary adventure playgrounds in various communities in Sacramento. The next group is a pop-up playgroup. Sponsoring agency is Bret Hart Elementary School. This group would like to reduce isolation through building relationships between parents, children, and neighbors with physical activities at various parks in their community. Activities will also offer teens the opportunity to be involved as mentors for the zero to five children. Go Bret Hart, that's my uh, alma mater. <laughs> The next group is the Sacramento Reading Adventure. The sponsoring agency is the daughter of Zion Enterprise. These parents and children in the Marina Vista, Alder Grove communities will travel to various parks locations for literacy events where story time activities come to life with dress up and creative play. The last group is uh, Ser Mamá y Mujer. North Sacramento Family Resource Center is the sponsoring agency. This group provides support for mothers and young children who've experienced trauma. The group will include presenters and stress-reducing activities with their children. At this time, I'd like to invite um, current group leaders to share before we move to a motion to approve, but do you have any questions before we move on to that? Any questions? Great. Okay. So I would um, like to invite Selena Opus to the podium. Selena is with Sacramento Signing Families. The sponsoring agency is Warmline. This group is part of round one, so their term is coming to an end. First five funded, however, this group has been so successful in building relationships in the community that they will definitely continue to be a resource for families. Hi there, um, I want to start out with, I am a mother of three children. My oldest is deaf and has autism. My second is has Asperger's and he's hearing. My third is deaf. Um, we started Sacramento Signing Families a few years ago, just literally as a bunch of parents. Our kids were in program and we're like, hey, well, let's go hang out. So we started doing that. We then we would pick up our kids from from our um, early intervention programs and our preschool programs that focused on ASL and um, just everything having to do with hearing loss and early intervention. And we'd go to the mall and hang out and play. Um, it, that turned into an, an online parent group um, that further turned into a local resource for a lot of other agencies such as NorCal Services for Deaf and Hard of Hearing. Um, we reached so far, we reached over to the East Coast, they found out about us. Um, we partner very closely with the California School for the Deaf in Fremont. Um, they have our flyers on their campus even though they're two hours away. Um, but we are able to support families with deaf infants and children um, of all hearing levels, whether or not they use sign language, and just make it a fun, safe place for all of us to come together. Uh, many times, other parents don't understand what we are going through. Um, we know we're learning a second language for our children, ASL, um, and coming together really helps us to provide that support for one another and we, we've all become so close that it's, you know, we spend holidays together. Um, we make our own Thanksgiving, we make our own Christmas, um, we go on outings together. Um, just, it's, it's a good program and we, um, one of the partners I mentioned earlier, the California School for the Deaf, they have a workshop on literacy, so we invited them to come up and present for our group 
and they did a whole workshop on literacy acquisition in deaf children um, using ASL and it was very successful and we had parents show up and it was we held it was housed at NorCal Services for Deaf and Hard of Hearing and we did we highly underestimated the amount of people that would show up uh, we had standing room only and then people sitting on tables in the back and we we're like oh this is really popular oh okay um, but we want to make sure that um, families ha continue to have access to that kind of resource and our kids would be able to continue to play together. Um, our kids have been friends since infancy, so they're, you know, they play like siblings, they fight like siblings, mm -hmm. um, but it overall it is very successful and we, you know, we were able to get donations from a large um, deaf resource, deaf book resource. Uh, they're known across the nation as Dawn Sign Press and they gave us resources, just handed over lots and lots of books for our kids since we do focus on literacy acquisition. Um, we were given a lots of it, and we have story times in ASL at um, one of the local self sac libraries, and they donated a lot of stuff to us too. And we're like, oh, well, we have to use money. They're like, well, no, 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 we'll give you this. And we're like, oh, okay, th thank you, but we, we have to use some money. They're like, no, 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 it's free. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, but they have been so gracious as hosts, and uh, you know, we just recently had one of our um, ending story times at the at the library because our our time with first five is ending and they said you know what don't worry about you know having to reserve just let us know we'll open up our doors to you anytime you want for anything that you guys need we loved having you so and that's been really nice we've been able to have a few th a few potlucks on um, college campuses which it's a bigger facility for us um, it's just it's been a good time and we really appreciate the support from first five and our sponsoring agent um, agencies uh, and we couldn't have done it without you guys. And we will continue to um, get together. It's something that's lasting. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next group I have is uh, Huang Dang. She is the group leader for the Vietnamese Young Mothers from Round 2. The sponsoring agency is the Vietnamese Baptist Church. This group is more than halfway into their term. Accompanying her is also Trin Vu, who's actually one of our advisory members and has been very supportive of this group. Yes, hi, good afternoon, um, commissioners and everyone else. Uh, my name is Huan Dang with the Vietnamese Hope Baptist Church. Our, our other leaders cannot come here, they cannot drive at this point in time. This is my um, biggest supporter. <laughs> she comes to almost every event and she <laughs> feeds us with all the resources that we never know about. And I first found out about her when she presented her first five material at a Vacus. That's our Vietnamese Community Center Health Fair. So I'm so glad to meet her and um, she's been a great support. Um, and just a little bit about our group. We started out with uh, three leaders and with the CBG fund. We kicked off our first event um, in September 2016 and that first event was very fun. It was a field trip to Sacramento Zoo and from that kickoff everybody keep coming back and see what else is next. <laughs> and so uh, the next event, um, actually we meet every first Saturday of the month except the winter months. And then we had um, focus for each uh, event. We had a reading day, a writing day, word day, and the latest one we had was uh, on Saturday, April 1st, which was puzzle day. Mm -hmm. Oh, but along with all the focus there, we always have dancing and music. So the kids are excited and that's something that the parents could not do at home by themselves. They need other kids around. So it was a fun event for all the, the family members. Uh, and we also have uh, craft activities too. And the most important thing, lunch. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, we've been having pizzas and fried rice and stuff like that, snacks, but that's a good time when everybody actually sit together and find their favorite friends. Uh, you know, after all the events, they find their favorite ones, so they sit next to them and, and the mothers too. So that's our um, mingle time, yes. And um, our success um, can be described in two words. The first one is connect. 
So with the fund and with the project that we have going on, which is called Successful Children Project, all the mothers, fathers, uh, grandparents, auntie, uncles, they all came. Doesn't matter what the age group is, and they just connect because uh, you know they have the common goal for their kids, um, and uh, we are able to connect to resources, first five resources, and advisory people, and support people, and CAPC, CAPC besides Alejandra too, she's a great support too. So that's connect. Um, the second word that define our success is excitement. And the way we measure it is that people keep returning and they keep checking on us. When's our next event in case they missed it? <laughs> okay, but we keep it easy for first Saturday of the month. So that was our success and our appreciation. Um, my last word is just appreciate. Uh, first five grant to enable our community to come together, connect to each other, make our event exciting for all the kids to grow up in success. So thank you very much. I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of that. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, we are requesting approval of the funding recommendations for the round three grants. Commissioner Moak, did you have a uh, can we, is that okay? Yeah. You're open for comment now? I'm open. You're open. Yeah. Uh, so just a few, a few things, as you can imagine, I'm um, shocking that I'll weigh in here. I'm so proud of the fact that we're doing this, uh, or potentially going to do this right now, uh, based upon um, just where we've been over the last decade as it relates to this program. This, we started strong uh, about nine years ago, I think, or eight, um, <clears throat> investing in this strategy around, around the region. We had some evaluation results that were ultimately published, one of the few published evaluation studies that was done in First Five Sacramento's history was done with this program, let's not forget about that. Um, and and the fact that it and we and then we faced some uh, challenges um, and the program went away for a little bit and to see it come back and come back like this is just spectacular. I'm so proud of each and every one of you for um, being willing to invest your time and your talent to help connect people. I thought your two words were spot on around connecting and excitement. That's almost exactly what the research findings talked about and what other research has proved that this does, that, these, that this type of work in communities does. And so, um, you know, particularly because in the, in the grand scheme of things, I think for our overall community engagement strategy, this takes up about 2% of the overall budget as it relates to allocation. Should not forget about that either. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm so thrilled to be associated with all of you um, and that you're doing this work in, in these communities. I could not be more proud of, of each and every one of you. Um, in the 10 years I've been here, I don't think we've ever had introduced groups and had applause break out in the meeting. Uh -huh. So like, kuda, well done. I feel like you've now set a new bar for us, like a new standard. Um, but I can't wait to hear about your successes. I can't wait to hear about um, how much fun you're having and how much good you're doing. And one thing I'll say, I know you're, you're in the business of connecting people within your groups, whether it's the men's childcare or the other groups that are around, right? You're gonna, you're gonna bring people together and they're gonna connect and that's the point. The one thing I wouldn't miss out on is that you can connect with each other right here. Right. So you can actually, right now, I would, I would venture to say, and Dr. Wirtz will say otherwise, but because he will prove, make me prove it with data, but if you connect, with, if one of you share an email with another person from another program, our community is healthier because you're doing that. So don't forget about the power of connecting with each other as well, because you're all doing something absolutely spectacular, and thank you for doing it. <laughs> thank you, yes. Yeah, with the applause. <laughs> Okay. Is that it?
Yes, and just um, to expand on Scott's point, is I, we, we did have the opportunity to meet individually with each of the groups, and we are very excited about the collaborative efforts that they are already doing. Yeah. So, so um, they're already building on the strengths of each other and, and starting that connection. Love it. Thank you. Okay, who is playing the part of David Gordon today? Because I have Dave Gordon on the screen here. <laughs> who, who, who punched in to speak? Okay, Kathy. I, uh, going along with what was just mentioned about connecting, I was hoping that we have some plan uh, for the first two groups to somehow or other have a community of practice where people can talk to each other, not just each cohort, but the entire body. And I don't know what staff is planning in that area, but I think it would be important. Yes. Yes, actually I have um, had that opportunity already through our um, through Leads for Tomorrow. Um, they've already provided a training. It was Their first training was in December where rounds one and two were able to come together and collaborate. They will be holding another training and the, the topics are chosen by the community groups. That, that, that first training, they wanted additional um, skilled resources for how to be a leader in their community and parent engagement. So that was the topic for the first training. We will assess through round three what else would they like, what type of support would they like. Um, so in June, we are planning for a, another time to now bring one, two, and three together. Um, and we will also like to, to plan something, at least for this strategic plan, where all are invited. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll entertain a motion here in a minute, but before uh, I do, I'll just add my two cents. I uh, certainly appreciate um, everyone that has taken time from your busy schedules to be here. Um, and I know it's been said um, many times in these chambers uh, at other uh, first five commission meetings, but I'll say it again, we, we can't do anything that we hope to achieve in, in almost every aspect of governance without the strong support of uh, uh, community organizations like those that have been acknowledged here today and two of which have taken time to express their um, their successes uh, for their models of, of what they do. And um, without getting too far in the weeds here, um, uh, we do have, uh, unfortunately, we've seen a proposed budget from uh, the Trump administration that would do many things, one of which, and it was mentioned earlier, uh, the use with which um, uh, one particular or organization, and this probably could be said for many, uh, that you use com community development block grants. Um, if you haven't educated yourself thoroughly on what is being proposed by the White House, please do so, especially as it regards uh, CDBG funding. Um, in an effort to redirect um, much of the uh, funding for a whole host of things, um, including uh, infrastructure and um, national parks and other things, um, CDBG, CDBG funding is on the chopping block, big time. And so um, doing what you do, uh, just like doing what the county of Sacramento does in many instances, requires the assemblage of a lot of different funding sources. That's one and very critical one to, I think, everyone in this room. Um, and we have to do everything we can, at least in my humble estimation, to make sure we uh, write our congressional leaders um, at the right time um, as the administration's budget is um, going to be considered by Congress. This is one aspect of what's being proposed. I just find extremely objectionable. I find almost all of it objectionable, but this in particular. Um, and we just uh, respectfully ask for everyone's advocacy in that, re in that regard. It's important. Well done. Okay. Uh, we do need to take action on this. I don't have anyone signed up to speak. I uh, entertain a motion at this point. I'm happy to move the uh, proposed item to fund all of these fantastic people and groups to help make our communities better. Great. I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved by Commissioner Moak and seconded by Commissioner Sneeringer. Roll call vote, please. Donna Sneeringer? Aye. Beth Hassett? Aye. Terrence Jones? Aye. Olivia Kassiri? Aye. Paul Lake? Aye. Scott Moak? Aye. Phil Cerna? Aye. It passed. Motion passed. Thank you. And thanks again to everyone that's come here today. Okay, next item, please. Public hearing, first five California fiscal year 2015-16 annual report. Thanks, Carmen Garcia Gomez is here to take the lead on this one. 
Good afternoon, commissioners. So today we have a public hearing on the first five California fiscal year 2015-16 annual report. As you may remember, in the fall I came and presented our annual report with our data and then that data was uploaded to first five California along with all of the other 57 counties compiled into a report that you all have. Hold on, Karen. We still have uh, the balance of our hearing. If you could take your conversations uh, into the lobby, that would be greatly appreciated. And your phone calls. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Sure. So you all have a copy of the first five California annual report. The Children and Families Act of 1998 requires that every year the county commission submit a fiscal audit and an annual report to the First Five California Children and Families Commission by November 1st. The First Five California perform an annual audit and submit an annual report to county commissions, the governor, and the state legislature by January 31st, and that each county commission hold at least one public hearing on First Five California's annual report, and it is what we're doing today. The annual report provides a comprehensive overview of the state's programs and services. Also included in the report are fiscal and service data relating to the county commission's collective result areas, family functioning, child development, child health, and systems of care. As mentioned, First Five California focuses on four result areas, improved family functioning, improved child development, improved child health, and improved systems of care. In fiscal year 15-16, First Five California revenues totaled $85.5 million, and county commissions received 341.1 million. I'm sorry, 0.9. The county focus, the total expenditures and the three primary result areas were $445 million. The breakdown is under improved child development, there were 191,861 services provided and 40% of the expenditures or the budget was in that area. Under child health, 829,052 services were provided and 34% of the expenditures. And family functioning, 804,655 services were provided with 26% of the expenditures in that area. The expenditures in the area of improving systems of care totaled $57 million. And it was broken out um, by organization support, 54% of the expenditures. Policy and um, broad systems change efforts, 30% of the expenditures. And public education and, and information, 16% of the expenditures. But I also wanted to highlight something very interesting that happened this, during this fiscal year, is that resources to policy and broad systems change efforts, as well as to public education and information, doubled from the previous year, which was very interesting. Included in the report also, beginning on page 32, are the county highlights. And you can read our first five Sacramento highlights on page 46. And that concludes my report. Great. Thank you, Carmen. Any questions? Okay. This is a public hearing, is it not? Yeah. So I'll open the public hearing. I don't see anyone requesting to address the commission. I will close the public hearing, bring this back to the commission for deliberation. Uh, motion. Is, do we need a, it says public hearing, but it says info only. How do I reconcile that? Don't know. Sorry. You're just receiving it as a public hearing. It's not an okay. my, my cheat sheet shows Sorry. public hearing and info only. So if we don't need a vote, we won't take a vote. I'm looking at our I, council. I, I don't believe you need to take a vote. There's no action that needs to okay. be taken other than have the public hearing. All right. Let's just double check that in the future to make sure I have the right script here. Um, okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, next item, please. Evaluation committee update. Uh, thank you. Um, 
I'm sorry, on the, uh, I left my notes on the way over here, so I apologize, but, um, uh, and I, I, I'm actually not prepared to, to summarize at the moment, so. Um, would you like me to? Would you assist me here? I apologize. <laughs> no problem. We had we had a an evaluation meeting um, last month where we um, talked about our results based accountability um, documents that include for three of our areas result uh, area um, school readiness effective parenting and cultural broker programs. So we're working on results based accountability um, for all of our bigger programs and those are going to be used as one of the tools in completing our implementation plan and we wanted to bring it to the evaluation committee to look over and give their blessing. Uh, we didn't quite finish the process so we are going to hold a special meeting on April 21st in the afternoon, um, 2.30 I believe it is, to continue that process. Carmen, thank you. I apologize. Oh, it's um, okay. And we were looking at those. Those are going to be sort of one, two page um, summaries that provide some over, oversight of uh, what kind of impact uh, are each of these programs have. And we, I think we really did want to sort of review that and get it as clear as possible. And for example, we did have a discussion around cost. Um, um, cost benefit or cost benefit analysis on there and, and I think we were discovering the difficulty of doing that with the range of resources that are uh, collaboratively brought together so I think we wanted to do some rethinking on that as well but uh, Carmen thank you very much and You're welcome. I apologize for not having my notes okay okay uh, sustainability the Sustainability Committee met on March 21st, and we have been busy this past month. Uh, we took positions on two more pieces of legislation, SB 63, the New Parent Leave Act, which would provide up to 12, leave, 12 weeks of job-protected maternity and paternity leave for California employees, and SB 379, which would improve data collected by kindergarten oral health assessment. So uh, that brings us up three bills that we've taken formal positions on. We had Erin Gable, who's the Deputy Director for First Five California, come and she did a little Legislation 101, which led to a robust conversation about how much time it takes to effectively participate in the bill support process. And we had a good discussion about how do we focus our efforts so as not to overextend our staff. <laughs> so that was a good use of, um, I think, our, that time. And I believe where we landed was to focus on things that were directly tied to our strategic plan and things that would have direct impacts on Sacramento County. So that was where we uh, left that conversation. We also talked a little bit about the kickoff of Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon's Blue Ribbon Commission on Early Education. They met for the first time the beginning of March, and they will continue to be meeting looking at how to best deliver early childhood education and child care services in the state. Um, our staff continues to work with ASR on the development of a system sustainability plan, and they're going to be presenting their first draft to us at our April meeting, and I'm sure we'll have more to tell you next month. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, item eight on our agenda is um, commission member comments. Dr. Kasiri. Uh, oh, just, sorry. Just a question, I, um, uh, I got a, a little surprised to hear the sustainability committee talking about taking positions. Um, my thought when, when it was created was that they were looking at how we were going to sustain our program, so. Sure, primarily we're, we're looking at um, bills or legislation that would improve the system of care for kids so that we could potentially stop funding some areas, like if there was something around I'm just going to throw it out as an example, like a universal preschool program that would potentially mean that we could stop paying our $2.4 million a year in preschool and have a universal system pick it up for, um, for children. So we're looking at specifically bills that would improve the system to the point where we could stop funding in some areas and redirect our money to other areas. 
Um, that was sort of one of our major, uh, that's the lens through which we're, we're trying to look at that. So for the ones that you're taking position on, what's the next step, what does it mean? Um, we get asked by a lot of different, well, by the legislators themselves and, and, and by others to be supportive of things that are, you know, would improve health and well-being of children zero to five. It basically means that we send in a letter. We have a process that we put together um, through the committee um, that the committee can act quickly to um, basically send in letters of support. Um, and the, potentially we would bring in parents for public hearings and to provide some public comment as necessary around that. Um, that's, that's basically what we would do. I'll look to, to Commissioner Steeringer for more information, but. And I think that that's heavily focused in this report, but the overall work of the committee is broader, and the sustainability plan looks at a variety of strategies, legislative being one of them, to look at how to partner with other First Fives around the state. Uh, the bills that we've taken positions on are bills that other, um, our, our association and First Five California are either sponsoring or moving forward, and um, the the bulk of the sustainability work is at the local level doing things like the community forum, trying to engage the business community. This just happens to be the first prong and kind of the time of year. So I think that's why this focus was there. Yeah, and I'll, I'd say that the process was put in place back in September, October. It came to you all for um, a vote with the sort of the procedure for how things would go through and get approved by the um, by the committee and by Chair Cerna. So there is a, there is a process, and we we sort of vet all of the requests that we get and select the ones that are tied to our strategic plan that have some sort of hopefully some financial impact down the line that would benefit kids. Okay. All right, now, commission member comments. Looking to my right, any over here? Over here. Uh, I will just, uh, since we're talking about legislation, um, want to make sure everyone's aware that uh, Assembly member Kevin McCarty is carrying a bill, I believe it's uh, AB 1098, that would make mandatory for each of the 58 counties in the state of California to have a process in place and assign resources to carry out um, annual child death reports. And um, this bill was inspired uh, by the uh, work of the now Black Child Legacy Campaign, formerly RAACD um, effort. Uh, because as everyone will remember, the, um, the, the entire initiative was born from the fact that we were armed with this data to begin with. And not every county in the state actually has the infrastructure in place to um, understand the circumstance of every single child death um, in the year prior. And I think as we can all agree that because we did have that opportunity, um, it uh, gave us uh, um, gave us the the information we needed to understand the challenge and the problem moving forward and I am uh, wholeheartedly supporting um, Assembly Member McCarty on that um, piece of legislation and uh, would encourage others to uh, consider lending their support as well yep. all right there's nothing further before this Commission we are adjourned mm -hmm.